Hey guys, my name is Zach. Welcome to this week's video for the channel. Today we're talking about top five must-haves that I think every collector should have in their toolkit. Uh, these are not very expensive. I think you could probably buy everything on this list, almost everything at the dollar store, um, maybe like a dollar tree for one or two of the items, but they are not expensive and I think that they will increase your enjoyment of the hobby. So looking at the first one, it is blue tack. If you are someone that has done any amount of customizing, any amount of futzing, any amount of putting one part from one figure to another figure or kit bashing as they call it, you'll be very familiar with blue tack. It is a wonderful, wonderful material. I believe it's used typically for putting like posters on walls, uh, but in our hobby, it's uh, a very durable, very long lasting product. It's very cheap, uh, typically doesn't damage our figures uh, in the places that we would apply them to. And it's a wonderful thing to have in your toolkit as you get further in the hobby and you start modifying or um, changing parts of your figures with other companies parts so blue tack is very good you can get this at the dollar store uh, i use generic blue tack um, doesn't have to even be blue they sell it sometimes in like a grayish white uh, that works perfectly fine and uh, it's uh, definitely something that i recommend that you have in your six scale toolkit now up next makeup brushes I would recommend doing ones that look more like the left of this photo. Uh, the ones on the right, they tend to be a little stiffer, the shorter the bristles. And I think there are some, some that are a little firm where you could actually damage the paint on your figure. You really want a nice, soft, supple brush like the one on the left. You can get these at the dollar store for a dollar and they will last you forever. Um, obviously rinse them every once in a while with soap and water when you're done with them. Uh, keep them nice and fresh. You know, if it gets dusty from cleaning up a bunch of your figures, you want to clean that dust off. Uh, but I've used basically the same two or three of these for uh, five or six years. And um, honestly, I think the brush where the handle connects to the wood has worn out on those faster than the bristles have for how little we actually use them. It's a great way to get dust off your figures. Obviously, if you want to spend a little bit more money, get something like an air duster, which I did just upgrade to this year. Uh, that's definitely an option. But if you're uh, on a budget uh, or even I think even with an air duster, I still would go in with this beforehand to get a little bit of the dust off in the harder to reach areas. This is a great tool. It's also good for hobbying as well. I wouldn't use the brushes with paint for figures of course but you know if you buy a pack of multiple of these you can also use them for adding some extra weathering to your figures and whatnot so definitely pick up a makeup brush you can get them for about a dollar at the dollar store and they will last you pretty much forever up next is a lint roller this again goes with maintaining your figures a lot of times when you dust sometimes dust does kind of get worked into the fabric of our figures clothings and uh dusting it out with air or with a uh, light gentle brushing with a um, makeup brush doesn't help uh, i like to use a lint roller from time to time uh, it's really good on capes uh, and it just kind of gets everything nice and clean gets all the dust out gets any sort of um you know just small little particles out and I think it's invaluable. Again, you can get these at the dollar store. Um, they make the sort of name brand ones that are like three or $4 at Walmart, but the dollar store ones work just as good for our applications. And I think that, uh, you know, if you're in a pinch, I heard they make an excellent mic stand, uh, but I like lint rollers and I use them quite often in my figure cleaning. Uh, up next is a good super glue. <clears throat> now I use uh, Loctite liquid super glue. Um, for years, I never liked the liquid super glue. I used to always use Gorilla Glue gel, but I don't know if, if they changed their uh, formula recently, but probably for the last year and a half, I have had zero luck with uh, Gorilla Glue liquid and Gorilla Glue gel. It has just not been a good product for me. Um, and I like this super glue. It is obviously very liquidy, but it does have a little bit of surface tension where you, you know, if you put it on a part, it doesn't just run down like the dollar store super glues. This is one that I would actually spend the extra two or three dollars to get it from, you know, your dollar tree or uh, excuse me, family dollar or Walmart. Spend the extra few dollars uh, and get the name brand uh, because I, I think it does make a difference. Um, I would recommend that if you're ever trying to fix anything, always 
you know, take the cap off, put it on a third surface, so like a paper plate, close the cap, because I can tell you I've ruined figures by not closing that cap, put it away, get a toothpick, dip the toothpick in the, in the glue, and then apply it, throw the toothpick away, and then uh, put your pieces together. Um, that's the best way to do it. I've ruined figures of my own by not following those steps. But uh, this is really good stuff. I use it a lot for 3D printing. I use it a lot for figure repairs. Um, unfortunately, some of the glue that Hot Toys uses for magnets tends to not be super great. Uh, and with this, um, as with all super glue, less is more. Putting a bunch of super glue on something isn't going to make it stronger. It's just going to increase your odds of having a mishap where, you know, maybe glue runs out of the joint and it gets on your finger and you touch the Hot Toys. So be very careful with this. But uh, less is more, and a, a precise application can really do you some good. So I like Loctite Liquid Super Glue. They also sell it in an auto automotive version, which I don't know if it's marketing or if it's any different, but that one also works really well as well. But this is really good stuff. Definitely don't want to get it on your clothing. Definitely don't want to get it on your figure. But if there are small parts that have broken, <clears throat> for example, I had a, um, uh, a pistol on one of my figures uh, where the slide... Or not the slide rather, but the red dot had come off, and it was it was just a drop of glue that had 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 failed, and was able to fix that very easily and uh, save myself the 20 25 bucks that I would have had to spend uh, to purchase a replacement on toy anxiety. So, Loctite super glue, really good stuff. Uh, last, I think this is last, but certainly not least, is a screwdriver kit. They don't have to be as um, multifaceted as this. This is the one that I have. I picked this up for my range bag uh, for like firearms, but it has worked wonders with collectibles. Every company has their own screw size that they use. Um, even joints on figure bodies when they become loose, you can use nail polish to tighten them up, but sometimes it's just a simple screw that you have to tighten uh, on bodies where you can access that part. And uh, having a high quality magnetic, very important magnetic uh, screwdriver with multiple bits I think is very useful. I know a lot of companies are moving away from batteries uh, to USB-C, which I think is fantastic. So these, this, this tip may not age particularly well, um, but I think at the moment with most of the older figures needing screwdrivers and even just general repairs, I think uh, there's been issues that I've personally had with uh, Hot Toys when they have their old PERS system where you would need to unscrew the mechanisms to get to the eyeballs. I believe even in art some of those figures have had some issues where you do need to get in there with a screwdriver. So having a nice high quality screwdriver is very important. I would never use something like this that comes in a, you know, included in a kit. These are typically very low quality. They're often not magnetic. And the surface of these, um, I don't know if if these are too hard or these are too soft, but I often find that they mar the screws, the screw head themselves. And so these are not very good. I would never, ever, ever use something like this on a uh, Hot Toys. I would always use something a little higher quality, you know, a $10 set like this would, I think, pretty much do you for as long as you need. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would recommend. So uh, let's see here. Yep, that's it for the list. So those are my... Uh, top five tools that I think every collector needs. So again, we have blue tack, we have makeup brushes, we have lint rollers, we have super glue, name brand Loctite is what I recommend, liquid, uh, and then we have the screwdriver set. So if you're a collector, if you're experienced, or if you're new to the hobby, this is what I would recommend. Uh, many years ago, I did a video of sort of a stocking stuffer for collectors, and I'll link that in the description below because it's basically all the products in that video you can buy from the dollar store and though it is an old video though it never really got any views i think it still has a lot of useful information that you can apply to collectibles today so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the video uh we'll have more um garage conversion slash studio conversion stuff uh coming to the channel soon i hope you enjoyed the video have a great one and we'll catch you on the next video